Hey guys, I'm Mark. Right now it's midsummer and I've got about 90 days until my first frost in my part of the world. And what that means for me is that it's time for me to start my brassica seeds, at least the ones that I'm gonna start off growing in flats, things like cabbage and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and cauliflower, that kind of stuff. Uh, my video that I'm gonna do today is gonna be broken up in about three pieces. My first part, I'm gonna talk about my overall theory of why I like to grow my brassicas in the fall versus spring. The second part, I'm gonna talk about specifically the different varieties of things that I'm gonna grow. And then to wrap it up, I'm gonna talk about how it is exactly that I sow these types of things. So to start off with, brassicas are a cold weather crop. They do not do well in the heat of summer, especially like here in Maryland where we had these hot, humid summers. They just get all kinds of issues with bugs and, uh, and they just heat stress and they just don't like it. So you're either gonna have to grow your brassicas in the springtime or in the fall. I prefer, I prefer to grow the bulk of my brassicas in the fall and I've got several reasons for that. There's a few exceptions for things that I will grow in the springtime like kale and some early cabbages, but by and large, most of the brassicas I like to do, I like to grow them in the fall. And the first reason is, well, springtime is a very busy time of year here at the nursery. Um, April, March, that time of year, we've got the needle in the red around here. And it's just very difficult for me to number one, get those types of plants in the ground. And then number two, when they come around to harvest time, it's you know May, June, July, and that's still a really time, uh, busy time of year for me. I'm getting my tomato plants in the ground, I'm mulching. Uh, so fall for me is a lot better to harvest this kind of stuff when I have a lot more time on my hands where I can freeze broccoli and I can make you know sauerkraut and kimchi and things like that. So the, the window for me is just a lot more appropriate to, uh, to be pulling that stuff up in the fall. Second reason I like to grow in the fall is because of cabbage butterflies. We have a big cabbage butterfly problem here in Maryland, especially around May, June, in that window when you're gonna be harvesting a lot of this stuff. In the fall, you don't have that problem. In November, December, you know, the, the cabbage butterflies are long gone and so are the caterpillars. You can harvest the stuff in the spring with the holes in it, you know, it's, that's fine, but who doesn't, you know, who doesn't like perfect? In the fall, you're gonna get perfect, so that's, that's a huge plus. Another thing is the frost. Brassicas of all kinds love a nice mild frost, and they love those nice cooler nights in general. When you start having a couple mild frosts at night, they get sweeter, the texture changes in them, a lot of the colors come out, you start seeing those purples and those reds, they just get better all around. So, you know, again, most of my things, fall. Last reason I think for me, fall is a big deal, just for the sake of like, just the mental, the mental association of Brussels sprouts being, you know, for me, that's like a Thanksgiving thing. It's, it, it's, I'm thinking, when I think Brussels sprouts, I think Thanksgiving, Christmas time. I'm not thinking about Brussels sprouts and sauerkraut in May or June. You know, I'm thinking about a whole lot of other stuff I'd like to be eating at that point. But, uh, you know, in the winter time, I think there's nothing better than a little bit of uh, some roasted Brussels sprouts or some boiled cabbage and things like that. So the different things I'm gonna grow for sake of this season, I'll get into that. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna grow some kale, cauliflower, and broccoli, some cabbage, some Brussels sprouts, and then some collards. The varieties I'm gonna do, I'm only gonna do a couple types of kale because I have a whole lot of kale up in the garden right now from what I planted this spring. That is one of those exceptions that I talked about. I like putting kale in because kale, it starts off, it gives you a crop in the spring, and then it just kinda hangs on through summer. It keeps producing. It's not really as tasty during summer, but it's there. And then when fall rolls around, you get a huge major crop off of it again. So kale is one of those things that's really definitely worth planting in the spring. But I've got a lot of red Russian up there and I would like to have a couple more, especially some lacinato kale. I think I'm saying that right. It's the dinosaur kale or the Toscano kale, the Tuscan kale. I think the Italians call it Cavolo Nero. I don't know if I'm saying that right, I'm not Italian, but uh, I, I really like the texture of that one. So I'm gonna grow that, and then I'm also gonna grow this thing called Groninger Blue. It's an old Dutch heirloom. Apparently they've grown it in Amsterdam for like hundreds of years. A friend recommended this to me. They say it's a lot like Red Russian, but it's got a little bit better texture to it. So I'm gonna give that a shot. Cauliflower, I'm doing three kinds of that. I'm gonna do a white one, an orange one, and a purple one. The white one is Snow Crown, then Cheddar is the orange one, and then for the purple one, that one's called Graffiti. Broccoli, I'm doing two kinds of that. I'm just doing a standard, regular green broccoli. I've got Pac-Man and Gypsy are the two varieties of that. Cabbage, I've got a whole bunch of stuff. I've got 
the late flat Dutch, that's the big boy. He's gonna get pretty big and it's gonna be good for sauerkraut and storage. I've got uh, a Savoy cabbage. Uh, that's like the wrinkly kind of cabbage around one. That variety is called Savoy Ace. I've got a red cabbage in here. Gotta have a red cabbage. I'm gonna do super red 80 is the variety of that. And then a stonehead, good old stonehead. Uh, that's just a good all around cabbage. Keeps well, it's smaller heads, great all purpose. Uh, Stonehead is. And then the last one I've got China Gold and that's a Napa cabbage. That's the one that I'm going to be using to make kimchi with. So those are my cabbages. Brussels sprouts, I got two varieties. I've got just a regular Brussels sprout, regular green type called Jade Cross. And then I'm growing one called Falstaff. That's like a red variety and that's going to really start picking up that color like I was talking about after those first few frosts. So that's going to be pretty interesting. And then last but not least, collards. The variety on that is Vates. I'm not a, I'm not a huge collard guy myself. I personally like kale, uh, but I got several friends that are really into collards and they've been pounding down my door for me to grow some of this. So I'm, I'm going to throw in some Vates for them. Anyway, we'll get on to exactly how it is that I sow these guys. You got to be careful with brassicas in general because they have a tendency to rot off. The germination rate is really not that good on them. So you're going to want to make you're going to want to sow about twice as much really than, than what you're going to wind up using in the end, just to account for that. What I'm going to be sowing into is a 104 tray. This is a, this is a nursery tray that we use. They, this is a 104 because it's got 104 cells. They come in all different sh uh, shapes and sizes. Well, not shapes. They're all pretty much the same uh, size overall, but you can have plug trays that have 50 plugs. 30 plugs are big, big ones. And then you got ones that are over 200 and some are like 400. They're super tiny, but this is a 104 tray. It works really well for us. Uh, it drains well and they don't seem to rot off as much in this type tray. These can be a little bit difficult to find on, this, on the consumer market. But if you have a local independent greenhouse near you, I would just stop by, especially this time of year when they're not that busy and just ask them real nicely. If you could have a few of these, chances are they'll just give them to you. Uh, and if they don't have these on hand, then they'll probably have something really similar. But that's what I'm using today. What I filled it with is just regular good old potting soil. A key thing that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do is you wanna make sure that your potting soil is damp to start with, at least just a little bit damp, not too damp, but like if you grab a handful of it and you squeeze it really hard, you just, just like maybe a drop or two comes out. That, that should be about perfect. This time of year, when you go for your potting soil, a lot of times, We'll have that potting soil, that bag of potting soil that's left over in the garage from spring and the top might be, to open, be open on it and it's probably really dried out and dusty. Uh, so if that's the case, just throw a little bit of water into the bag. Be careful about how much, you know, just kind of eyeball it, mix it around. You can always add more. I come back to it, you know, five minutes later, make sure that you got the moisture right. That way, because, you know, if you put really dry potting soil in here and you put your seeds in and you wet it down, well, you might only be getting the top like quarter inch or half inch of the soil moist, maybe not even that. And you'll come back to your tray like three or four hours later and the whole thing will be bone dry. So it just helps out to have moist potting soil to start with. So I filled it up. Uh, I went ahead after I filled it up with one layer, I just, you know, kind of tossed it on here. I spread it around. And then what I did was I dropped it a couple times. That way I, I watched to see if there was any pockets that sort of, that didn't get filled up they sort of drop down and then you and then you cover it over again and you wipe the excess off so that's what i've done to this so far the second step to this is just kind of take your fingers and just lightly go through and we call this dibbling it's just pressing the soil down just a little bit you don't want to press too hard because again that's going to interfere with drainage you're going to compact the soil a little bit too much brassicas of all kinds seem to seem to really like good drainage they, they have issues with rotting so don't don't just firm down the soil like crazy. Just kind of give it a light little touch, press it down maybe an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. We have little trays that can do this. We can do a whole tray at a time, depending on what style of tray we're using. But if you're only doing a tray or two, this works just fine. Once you get, anyway, I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but once you get them all uh, tamped down or, or dibbled down like that, then you're gonna want, ahead and, gonna want to go ahead and put your seeds in. We'll start off with the late flat Dutch. All these brassica seeds are going to be treated the same way. They, all these seeds pretty much look identical. They act very similar. So in terms of germination, I'm going to, or the way that I germinate them, I'm going to treat them all pretty much the same. I'm going to go ahead and put one seed in each cell. 
That way I don't have to worry about, you know, coming back and thinning them out. I can afford to do that with, uh, with cells this small. And then, you know, if some don't pop up, they don't pop up. Just make sure that you plant enough that, you know, you got your bases covered. Anyway, I'll go through and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll lay my seeds out and then variety by variety so that I don't lose track. I'm going to go ahead at this point and stick a tag in. Now I like using these tags because we have them here at the nursery. We've got a lot of them. These are just tags that for stuff that never got planted up or we'll have tags in some cases for things that we throw away. Uh, these work great, but if you don't have these, I wouldn't go buying any tags. What I would do, just go through your recycling bin. This is what I did this afternoon. I just grabbed like a beach bottle, a bleach bottle, excuse me, and a, uh, and a yogurt container. These would be fine. You could take these and take a pair of scissors or your pruners or whatever you have and just kind of just cut them up. I mean, this bottle right here, between this and that, you, you'll get over a hundred tags if you cut them small enough. And then if they don't take a pencil, which is what I usually like to use is a pencil. If they don't accept a pencil, then you can use a permanent marker on those kinds of tags. Just be careful because some permanent markers are more permanent than others. So if you use permanent marker, get out in your garden and make sure you keep an eye on your tags once you sit them in the soil, if you choose to do that. Just keep an eye on things, make sure the rain's not really washing them off. That way, if you have to scramble and make some new tags, you got, you know, you have time to do that before everything gets lost. Anyway, that's just a, a quick tip. Once I've got everything tagged and all my seeds there where I want them to be, then what I'm gonna do is either come back with just a very light dusting of potting soil again, or what we like to use is vermiculite. Vermiculite is great for a lot of stuff because it, it lets light through for certain seeds that need light to germinate. And it just, it keeps things, it keeps the, the moisture level just right. It keeps them moist, but not too moist. So vermiculite's a, a great thing to use for us in a lot of situations. And that's what I'm gonna use on this. But anyway, that's how I do it. I'm gonna lay all these out. I'm gonna tag them. I'm gonna put the vermiculite on and I'm just gonna give them a light dusting of water to water them in. And then these will be ready to transplant. A lot of them, maybe two, three weeks from now, some varieties are gonna be a little faster than others. Some of the cabbages tend to take off a little bit quicker, but when they're ready, I'll either, uh, I'll either bump these up into some larger pots or I'll just go straight into the garden from here. In fact, that's probably what I'll do. If I run out of time and I don't have the space for them quite yet, then I'll bump them up into a larger pot. But if I have the beds ready and prepared, I'll just go ahead and stick them in just like this. So those are the varieties I'm growing. That's how I'm gonna do it. As always, if you have any varieties that you like to grow that you found worked really well for you, please leave a comment, write me an email. Always interested in hearing that kind of stuff. And then also, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do because that bumps my video up in the scheme of things. It gets me in front of more eyes and that's just something I would greatly appreciate. But for now, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and I'll see you next time.